So now let's talk about double pointers. Before we talk about double pointers, remember that a pointer is a variable that holds a memory address. So an integer pointer, character pointer, animal object pointer, we can have a pointer to any variable. So a double pointer is a variable that holds the memory address of a pointer variable. Just like an integer pointer points to an integer, a double pointer points to a pointer. So we can have a pointer to an integer pointer, a pointer to a character pointer, or a pointer to an animal object. We can have a pointer to any type of pointer. Now notice pointers to different types are different types themselves. And so our double pointer is a pointer to a specific type of pointer. So let's see some code examples and how they work in memory. If I have an integer variable, somewhere in memory, the compiler allocates memory, it puts in the value, and I have my variable in memory. Now, if I declare a pointer, I can set that pointer to the address of my integer variable. And so I would have something like this, where in memory, there's a variable. That variable holds the address of the integer pointer. So notice its contents are the same as the address of the integer variable I created earlier. And if I dereference that pointer, then it's essentially an alias of that variable that the pointer is pointing to. Now a double pointer, again, we have two asterisks in the type declaration. We're going to have it hold the address of our integer pointer. So you'll notice its value is 218. That's the address of the pointer. And when I dereference that pointer, it now becomes an alias not of the integer variable, but of the integer pointer whose address it holds. And then if I double dereference it, the first dereference gives me an alias of the integer pointer. And dereferencing that again is like dereferencing that integer pointer, which gives me an alias of the integer variable. So let's see this a different way. If I have a bunch of memory, these addresses are shortened. So the actual address is eight characters or whatever. So I just took the last three because those were all unique. So here's my integer variable. We get some location in memory that gets the label val because that's the name of my variable and it gets filled with the value seven. If I print this variable, I can print its address. Notice that's a pointer. You can see in the printf statement that it's a percent %p and its value. So its address is its memory address and its value is the value it stores. So when I run this, it prints the address of the integer variable and the value seven, which is the value it holds. For my single pointer, I'm initializing it to the address of that integer variable. So I get some memory for my pointer and it gets filled with the address of the integer variable that it's pointing to. And so when I print its address, it's going to give me the address of the pointer where the pointer variable is stored. If I print its value, that's gonna be the address of the integer variable. And if I dereference it, I get an alias to the integer variable, so I get the result seven. And so if I print that out, you can see the pointer has its own address. Its value is the address of the integer variable. And when I dereference it, I get an alias to that integer. So with my double pointer, again, we see some memory allocated. We're initializing it to the address of the integer pointer, which it's stored at 218. So the value 218 is stored in the variable D pointer. That's our double pointer variable. And then when I print it out, notice I'm printing out the address where that variable is stored. I'm printing the value of that address. I'm dereferencing the address, which again, it's a double pointer. So when I dereference it, I'm getting an alias to another pointer. So that's also a pointer I need to print out. And then finally, I double dereference it, which should give me an alias of the original integer. So the address of that pointer is the address where the variable is stored. If I print the value of that double pointer, it's going to be the address of this other pointer. Notice 218, 218. If I dereference it, I get an alias of that pointer. And so when I print when I print that out, it should give me the value of that pointer. And then again, double dereferencing it gives me an alias of what the pointer that the double pointer is pointing to is pointing to. And so when I print that out, you'll see that the address is 220. The value it holds is 218, which is the integer pointer's address. When I dereference it, I get 214, which is the address the integer pointer is holding. And when I dereference it again, I get an alias of the variable that the integer variable is pointing to. So let's see how that looks in code. So here's my code. You can see that I have my declaration of my variables, my integer variable, my integer pointer variable, and my pointer to an integer pointer variable. And then I'm going to print those out. Those are the same print statements we saw earlier. 
and let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to compile. So let me make this a little bigger so that it doesn't scroll off the screen. And now I can run this. And you can see that we get the results that we saw above. There's a few places where you might see a double pointer in practice. So let's suppose that we have a function like this. So this function is going to return a new integer pointer. So it's passed a value. We create a new pointer. We allocate memory for that pointer. So this is essentially a dynamically allocated variable. This gives us an alias of that variable, which we fill with the value passed, and then we return that new pointer. So let's make a pointer. And we'll actually make two pointers. And let's print those out. So all I'm doing here is I'm printing out their original values before they're initialized. I print out its value and I print out its address. Then I'm going to call my function new int return for each of the pointers and then I'll print out the result. And notice at this point I didn't dereference them here because I don't know what they're pointing to so I don't want to dereference a pointer that's uninitialized. Here they should be initialized so I'll dereference it and it should print the values that I passed to the new int return functions. So let's see if this works. And it doesn't. So I just realized that I compiled the C++ before. Here's my original output from before. Now, the new stuff is this. Here's the original values. Notice it's just pointing to something and you can see where their address is. Then when I call the function, the address of the pointers doesn't change because they're just variables. Those aren't going to change. But the values they hold does change. They both get new addresses. This is now a valid address pointing to something real. And you can see that when I dereference, I get the values that were passed to the function. So that looks good. Okay, so that's one way to write a function that returns a new function. We haven't done double pointers yet. So now, instead of a function that returns something, let's write a procedure that changes the pointer's value. So if I'm going to pass in a pointer that I want the value of that pointer to be changed, I need a double pointer. And I'm going to take a value as well. So now what I need to do is I'm going to create a new pointer variable. And just like I did above, I'm going to allocate some memory. I'm going to set that memory. And now I'm going to dereference pointer and set that equal to new pointer. So the first three lines are the same as above, but here dereferencing pointer gives me an alias of the pointer that was passed to this function. Whatever value was passed, we're going to update it so that it holds this new value. We're going to do the exact same thing we did here, except now we're going to call new int, and I'll call this parm because it's a parameter. Now we need to pass not the pointer, but the address of the pointer, which remember, this gives us now the address of this pointer variable, which is a double pointer. That's the parameter that we take here. So when we dereference it, we get an, an alias of pointer one. And so pointer one is equal to whatever address we allocated. So let's compile this again. And we have some problems. We have too many arguments to the function. One, two. Ah, I didn't change the name of the function call. And now let's run. And so you can see that when we call it this way, where now the pointer is a parameter, or the address of the pointer is a parameter. But again, we update the values that the pointers hold to new addresses. And the address of the pointer itself never changes because that pointer is a variable. Just to differentiate what's going on here, let's select some different numbers. And now, again, you can see that we have the updated numbers. So where you would see a double pointer in practice would be any time where you would be writing functions that may update a pointer. So for example, if you're writing a linked list and you're deleting the head node of a linked list, well, you would pass that address to the head node of a linked list in the function, set it to next, and then you would need to update that pointer. And so one way to do that would be to write a function that takes a double pointer to the head of a linked list as its parameter. 
Again, normally in practice, integer pointers aren't super helpful unless you're working with arrays, but hopefully you can at least see how the mechanism of a double pointer works, and then you would be able to apply this, for example, if you're working with abstract data types or something where you have pointers to individual members of that data structure. So this is an introduction to double pointers in C.